Hello, good morning. My name is Hanfei Yu, and I'm a first year PhD student from Louisiana State University um, in Telesis Lab. And uh, this is the work, this is a work from collaboration of um, Louisiana State University, Sunny Bean Hunter University, and also University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And I'm going to present our work, Accelerating Serverless Computing by Harvesting Idle Resources, today. So what is serverless computing? Serverless computing relieves users from managing infrastructures by themselves, and users can easy, easily deploy their code on serverless platforms. And serverless platforms enable truly pay-as-you-go pay pricing model. So um, in the serverless computing setting, a user can just simply develop their code and package them as functions, and then select a serverless platform and deploy their uh, code as well as the function. And um, in our setting, a function refers to a piece of executable code, and an invocation refers to an instance of executing the function. Um, so existing service platforms typically allow users to pre-configure a static resource allocation limit when deploying their codes. However, um, actual resource usage is input data dependent. For example, um, in our example, the green circle represents a busy CPU core and the white circle represents uh, uh, an idle CPU core. Um, when a user tries to invoke the function previously deployed on a serverless platform, if the user passes a large input, a large size of input data, the invocation of the function can reach a full utilization, for example, two, full two cores, and that results in a five second of execution time. Instead, if a user tries to invoke the function by passing a small size of input data, the function can only utilize one core, which results in a, a smaller execution time, for example, one second. However, in this case, each invocation has a unique resource consumption and a unique resource demand. And there's a gap between the static resource limit that each function can uh, access and the actual resource consumption. So we propose to harvest idle resources from those over allocated invo function invocations to accelerate those under allocated functions. For example, in our case, we harvest the, the one core from the function invocation two and reassign it to accelerate function invocation one. And that leads to a two, two second re reduction in the end to end re function response latency. But, um, but there is a question. Um, the, uh, readers may wonder how to identify the, the actual resource demand of a function invocation given its input data. So we provide, we provide several realistic serverless applications, and we found that there is a resource saturation point. The definition of a, of a saturation point is that given a function and an input size, there exists a resource allocation saturation point. Allocating resource beyond this point can no longer improve the function's performance, but allocating resource below this point severely degrades the performance. Here in our application, we have two different serverless functions. The first one is EG called email generation, and the, the, the second one is called KNN, K nearest neighbors, which is a machine learning application. And both for CPU consumption and memory consumption, there's a saturation point where um, the labels are red, are red stars. And the performance stops growing when supplying more resources. And next, we perform harvesting and uh, idea of harvesting and acceleration on four real-world serverless applications. We have two additional applications here. IR means image recognition, and ALU means arithmetic logic unit. So in, the, in our example, we, we harvest CPU cores, three CPU cores from e email generation, and one CPU core from image recognition uh, function, and we, use, we reassign those four cores to, uh, to ALU function. And the function and the function end-to-end -end function response latency can be reduced with supplying harvested resources. While the while the performance of the two harvested functions 
does not degrade their performance because of har careful harvesting. And it is uh, complicated to, to operate harvesting and uh, acceleration in a service cluster. For example, there are four general rebalance resource rebalance cases. Case one is um, two, two functions, two function invocations are from the same function and both of them are donators and receivers. For example, um, the rectangle represents an idle memory slot and a circle represents an idle CPU core. So function one donates its idle CPU core to function invocation two, but function invocation two also donates its idle memory to function invocation one. Both of them are donators and receivers. And there is also a case two where only one pure donator and one pure receiver. Both of the two invocations are from the same function. And we have case three and case four. The two different invocations are from different functions, but they can be both donators and receivers, and they also can be pure donator and pure receiver. Except for the, the different cases, we also have dynamic decision in, in our problem scenario. From the perspective of a service platform, the service provider needs to handle varying functions, varying invocations per function, very input data per invocation, and each invocation requires an allocation decision. So this is a series of sequential allocation decision process, and it can be formed as a Markov decision process. Hence, we propose to use deep reinforcement learning to achieve to, to accurately estimate the resource saturation points. So in a general reinforcement learning setting, there is an agent interacting with an environment through episodes of training. In each episode, the agent makes an action and the action applies to the environment. And the environment gives a reward to judge whether the previous action was a bad one or a good one. So in our, in, in our setting, the environment is Apache OpenWiz, which is a, an open source distributed serverless framework that powers IBM cloud functions. And the states are information from the function and the platform. And the actions taken by this agent is uh, every resource allocation per function. And the rewards are end-to-end -end function response latency. We propose Frere, a new resource manager for serverless platforms that maximizes resource efficiency by dynamically harvesting idle resources from over-provisioned functions to under-provisioned functions. Um, the figure here shown on the slides is a god in Norse mythology, Frere, which is with uh, who is with fertility and good harvesting. We name our work after Frere to indicate the resource harvesting technique. Here is the workflow of Frere. So, given an, an incoming invocation with this input site, we first collect information from the platform and the function. The information from the platform includes includes in flight the number of in Flight invocations, available CPU, available memory, etc., and the information from the function include the average CPU pick, average memory pick, and so on. After collecting those those information, we concatenate them into a flattened state vector, and we input them to to a, to a DRL network, a policy network, where we use proximal policy optimization (PPO) to train the DRL agent. And we also have a safeguard to filter out invalid allocation options and monitors the resource consumption at real time to return resources when detecting a potential for usage. Here is an architecture diagram of our proposed Flare. We built the prototype, prototype of Flare on top of Apache OpenWiz, an open source distributed service platform. So, Flare has, an, has a front end re that receives function invocations from users. After receiving an invocation, the front end forwards the invocation to the controller, which collects and sends states to the DRL agent. And Flare's agent predicts an allocation option and sends it back to controller. And the controller then forwards the function invocation with its decision predicted by the agent to an invoker. An invoker is also called a, a, a worker node, which executes function invocation. And then the invoker executes the function and submits the results and usage to the database for further predictions. 
So we have we performed realistic experiments on a 13 VM of 13 VM cluster, where each VM is with eight CPU cores and 32 gigs of memory. And one VM serves as a uh, user client node, one serves as a front end node, one serves as a, a controller node, and the, the other 10 are worker nodes. We have three baselines in our evaluation. Uh, a fixed resource manager, which is the default, as well as um, the default resource manager in existing service platforms. And a greedy RM, which is a heuristic greedy-based um, harvesting algorithm. And the state of the art, a state of the art work ensure, which is proposed and uh, proposed in uh, ACSOS 2020. The first metric is the function execution speed up. So um, here we define response latency as the function invocation end-to-end -end latency. And from the left figure, we show that Square is able to achieve the uh, uh, the fastest uh, the fastest execution of a workload of the same workload regarding the CDF of response latency. And the, the, on the right side of the figure is the slowdown. We define slowdown as relative performance compared to user-defined resources. So large a larger a slowdown larger than 1.0 means that there there is performance degradation, and less than 1.0 means the execution speed up. And Ferrer is is not surprisingly the the fastest compared to the baselines. And also note that Ferrer is, is able to maintain negligible performance impact on the workload while harvesting resources. Next, we introduce the metric of resource allocation details. So in this figure, each point represents uh, the resource allocation decision of every invocation. And different marks indicate different um, types of invocations. A circle denotes the invocations with no adju adjustment. A plus mark den denotes the invocations with the supplementary resources. A minus mark denotes the invocations have idle resources and being harvested. A X mark denotes the invocations being safeguarded. So first, we show two figures of CPU consumption and memory consumption of the default uh, resource manager uh, in existing service platforms. And because they don't have um, any adjustment on CPU and memory, so there is only default, um, default allocation option. And the slowdown is always uh, 1.0. One, 1 and the next one is greedy RM. Greedy RM is significantly different. It's significantly different from the default RM. It has harvesting and acceleration, but note that um, the slowdown is much larger. It's around um, 2.5. That means 250% of performance degradation. And the third one is uh, ensure the state, state of the art. Because of ensure only adjusting CPU powers, so it has no performance impact on the, on the um, memory consumption. It can, it can um, generally perform CPU harvesting and CPU acceleration, but also ensure is not able to maintain a user as their own. And last one is the CPU and memory consumption of our, of our prayer. Prayer is able to harvest, accurately harvest CPU and memory power and reassign them to accelerate other functions. And also we have a safeguard to, to guarantee user SLO. So um, the, the slowdown is always around 1.0. That means the, the performance degradation is negligible. So safeguard guarantees user SLOs of harvested in function invocations. And that's all of my presentation. Thank you. I may take questions now. Uh, thanks, Hanfei, for the awesome talk. Do we have any questions? Uh, we have several minutes for the questions. So if you have anything you want to ask, you can just uh, ask. Mm -hmm. OK, Hanfei, actually, I have uh, one question. So uh, in your experiment, uh, you need to measure if the harvesting will slow down other service functions, right? Yes. 
So yeah, you have some uh, experiment. So um, uh, I mean, it's the time is short, so probably you don't have time to introduce the experiment setup. So can you explain uh, how do you set up the environment for the measurement? Um, yes. So so basically, we said that the um, do do you mean how do we measure the performance? Or how do we measure? Yeah, that? I mean, um, so basically, this is service. Um, do you measure this on any commercial service platforms, such oh. as maybe OpenWhisk or the Lambda or something? So Apache uh, OpenWhisk is an yeah. open source platform. So we we host that using three um, private VMs. Um, there are like like the four major um servers providers AWS Lambda and uh, Google Cloud Functions they're in, they're like black boxes to to users like us so we have to host our own um, serverless platform and perform the experiment okay so for this VMs have you ever um, I mean some service claims they use the containers so yes uh, so compare so, with the container environment compare with your VMs do you think your master will still work and why um, actually, I think that's a, that's a very good point. I didn't mention that in the slides. So in the, for serverless platforms or serverless environments, functions are always executed in, inside containers or sandboxes or um, micro VMs. So here we only use VM to host OpenWhisk platform, like the components of OpenWhisk. But OpenWhisk itself executes functions inside containers. It uses Docker container to execute functions. So actually, we have another layer um, on top of, of VM. We all, we have the container layer. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, okay. But that's a good question. Okay, okay, thank you.